with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk, including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide available this month titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0. Mike, one of the provisions in here allows individuals to actually move money from a 529 plan that was supposed to be used for college into a Roth IRA for the beneficiary of the 529. How does it work? Yeah, so this has been a common concern for parents out there is what if I over contribute to a 529 plan, then I've got a bunch of money stuck in this account that I really can't touch until maybe I have grandchildren or you know some other scenario. And the Secure Act 2.0 attempts to solve some of that here. They've already changed it so you can use it for uh, secondary education such as uh, private high school and things like that. But this is a specific provision that allows you to move money from a 529 plan to the beneficiary and in the form of of a Roth IRA, so long as certain conditions are met. One, the account has to been open for 15 years or longer. There's some limits to how much can be done in total over the lifetime, $35,000, and the traditional Roth IRA contribution limits do apply. So only one calendar year, $6,500. They must have earnings to be able to do so. But this is a significant change, and really, in my view at least, solves a lot of the problem and concern about overfunding a 529 plan. Our guide this month is titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0, and there are two ways that you can request it. The first is by calling 800-393-4001. The second way to request it is by going to armstrongadvisory.com. That number again is 800-393-4001, or you can request it at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk, including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. 
The financial exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zada and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up to date about economic and market trends. Plus, breaking business news every day. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zada and Mike Armstrong. Happy Friday. Welcome back to the Financial Exchange. It's Mike Armstrong and Tucker Silva. Chuck's going to join us later because he's very, very busy right now. I'm placing with my lunch something order. something very, very important. He's placing his lunch order, and if he doesn't get that in... Actually, he's already six minutes late, so Lois, I would personally be in favor of saying no burrito for you, yeah. Chuck. You take yeah. away my lunch, I'm not doing the show. <laughs> Snooze, you Just, lose. You take Just away my lunch, I'm, I'm not doing the show. You can have a PB&J from Chipotle. <laughs> a, a PB and what? <laughs> I'm, I'm still placing my order. I Keep know. talking. Oh my God. So, uh, we start off the show today with some questions about the labor market. Uh, two articles being raised today one from New York, uh, excuse me, one from the journal, one from Bloomberg on the same question that I think everyone's asking right now, which is what exactly is happening in the labor market? Every week we are getting news from big companies like Disney, like Google, like 3M. Uh, that they are laying off employees, and yet, over the last three months, we've created over a million jobs uh, and seeing really no uptick in new jobless claims or unemployment in any meaningful way. And so, the conclusion seems to be that, yes, there are some big, big names out there that are going forward with layoffs. Like I mentioned, some of the largest companies in the world have announced job cuts in recent days. And yet, for a large section of the economy there is still job growth. So if you take a look at the last six months, for instance, 63% of total job growth came from education, healthcare, and leisure and hospitality. And yes, there have been big cuts at a few different companies like those techs that I mentioned, but the information technology sector as a whole makes up only 2% of the labor force. So you're talking about cuts to that 2% by and large. Now, granted, yeah, uh, you know, information technology is not counting the job cuts at 3M or at Disney and these other places. But the fact of the matter is that there is still a lot of pent up demand when it comes to areas like education and like restaurants and hotels and all those areas that were very much shut down and laid off a large portion of their workforce at the very early stages of the pandemic. Chuck. Yes, my, my order's done. Good. So here's... Uh, Again, I, I think that what's what's interesting to me in terms of, again, how, how does this all end up you know, fitting in and how does it all end up working together is job cuts to this point, again, they, they've increased off of their baseline from 2021 and 2022. Yeah, the, the um, total number of job cuts in the tech sector, I think, was estimated at about 100,000, according to layoffs. Uh, what, what is that? Layoffs.fyi. Layoffs. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. So here's, I guess, where I'm going with this is let's go back and not that these are comparable situations, but let's first look at the housing bubble. Okay. Okay. And we saw there's a company called Challenger that tracks monthly job cuts and layoffs.fyi hasn't been around long enough. So I'm going to reference the Challenger data here. You saw job cuts or layoffs specifically because this is what they track or layoffs actually you saw them start to rise they, they bottomed out in late 06 yep and then they were relatively flat for about a year and a half and then they started to rise in late 07 through early 08 okay nothing really again the u.s was not in recession at that point okay but ultimately they peaked in late 09 actually okay or rather mid 09 uh, after going up for about a year, year and a half. So it's not something where you inherently look at it and say, okay, you know, job cuts started going up in, you know, end of 07 and early 08. Was the U.S. in recession? Well, no, because they weren't of the magnitude where you were getting to that point yet. 
it ultimately took a lot more that needed to happen in order for that to really become a problem. A much more direct comparison, I think, is going to be to the tech bubble, just because the mechanics of kind of heading into this are more applicable than the financial crisis. If we look at the tech bubble, you had multiple years of rolling layoffs, okay, that really started in early 2000, mm -hmm. okay? So they started in early 2000, but ultimately, if you were to go and say, okay, that's, that's all well and good, but how does that impact, you know, what we saw from a recessionary standpoint, okay? If you're talking about when did the U.S. actually enter recession, it wasn't until March of 01. It was a year after those job cuts really started. Yeah, and I'll point out, you know, the unemployment rate in December of 2000, after what well, you said, layoffs had started, just kept going down. I mean, it was 3.9% at that stage. Likewise, unemployment rate in December of 2007, again, barely touching 5%. So this is, this is normal in the early stages of a potential end of a business cycle. It's not to say that this is 100% the end of a business cycle, but th there's a lot that's pointing to, you know, at some point in the next year or two, some chickens are going to have to come home to roost. But, again, I, I think that this is, this is why I say, hey, heading into just about every recession, there is a period where the soft landing looks possible mm -hmm. because unemployment has not yet started to rise, and inflation is, you know, under control in this case. Inflation has not been a concern in the past two recessions that we've headed into. But I, I think that ultimately, this is it, it's normal to go through a period where you're like, oh, maybe it won't be that bad. I remember back in 07, just as an example, okay, it was, you know, the, the latter part of 07, stocks continued to rise, actually. Yep. And everyone was still talking about, oh, you know, subprime this and subprime that, but stocks were going up. And that's where you famously had uh, Ben Bernanke say, you know, hey, subprime is contained. You know, we, we, we've got this one. That, that's the quote. Subprime is contained. Well, it wasn't. Turned out okay. not so much. So maybe you end up with a recession coming out of this in the next year or two. Maybe you don't. I happen to think there's a, a pretty good chance. I, I'm on team 2024 recession now. Mm -hmm. Okay, not 2023 at this point because the data has been stronger and you have to update for that. But ultimately, there's still a chance that you get one this year. And there's always a point leading into recessions where you're like, Maybe it won't be that bad, and then it, it ends up being that bad. Yeah, the, the, bull, the bullish case here, the soft landing case that I think you are hearing get made right now is, look, the layoffs, they have been largely concentrated in a specific sector of the economy, and I, I would go beyond tech here. I would say it's been relegated to areas of the labor force that were dramatically benefited by the pandemic. So toy companies, tech companies, uh, homes, equ home workout equipment, it's remained relegated to those areas. Perhaps the layoffs will remain focused in those areas enough. The, the layoffs will be enough that they bring down total incomes on a gross level, thereby bringing down some layers of spending, uh, maybe spooking some workers into believing that, hey, a big layoff is coming and not jumping to that next job, demanding a higher wage and you know, thereby controlling wage growth a little bit. And then you can move on from an economy that's, you know, the biggest concern has been inflation because that inflation eventually comes down. The, you know, the counterpoint to that is, well, that's never really happened. And that's, that's a very good counterpoint to, to yeah. that argument right there is, you know, we're, we're banking on this soft landing and there's no real factual evidence of that having happened in our nation's history. So I'm not going to call it impossible, but it seems like a bit of a stretch. So, yeah, I, I think if you're trying to answer the question, hey, you know, are we in a period of, you know, higher layoffs right now? I mean, yeah, compared to the last two years, but they're, they're not historically high by any means. You're, you're not seeing anything no. uh, that is, you know crazy or you know unprecedented or anything like that and as mike mentioned they've been confined to this point to a really narrow segment of the u.s economy again so far in 2022 or 2023 you've seen about and again this is from layoffs.fyi it's where i'm getting this this information from you've seen about a hundred thousand layoffs announced it's a lot it's i'm not, I'm not sure. trying to diminish that but currently there are north of 160 million people in the united states that have jobs 100,000 layoffs, 
is a drop in the bucket in the context of the overall size of the U.S. economy. You know what data I was trying to track down, Chuck, and maybe you can take a look and no, see if I you don't. have any way of finding it. Uh, the information sector makes up 2% of the labor force. I'm curious what portion of the total wages in the economy that makes up. Good oh boy. All right, why don't we take a quick break, and I'll try to figure that out, and I'll let you know what I find when we come back. Uh, and then also, we'll talk a little bit about, gee, is there going to be a recession this year, or is growth actually rebounding? Coming up after this. Business and financial news affecting the markets and your wallet. We've got it all, straight from Wall Street, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. The SECURE Act became law in 2019, but a new bill has updated some key areas. As of January 1st of this year, it's time to take another look at how these changes may affect your financial situation. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. And whether it's the new age for required minimum distributions, how RMDs are affected if you have a Roth 401k account, or changes to catch-up contributions to any employer-sponsored retirement plan, we have a brand new guide called Understanding the SECURE Act 2.0. This guide provides important information as to how any or all of these issues may affect your personal financial strategy. Call us right now at 800-393-4001 and request your free guide today, or you can request it at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. This is Tucker Silva, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutzke from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan with your financial exchange quick tip of the day. And today, we're talking about the use of life estates in your primary residence. Todd, what are the pitfalls associated with creating a life estate when you transfer the remainder interest to your children? So that's a great question because there are two ways to create them. One in which you ind indicated transferring the remainder interest to your children, and the other is transferring the remainder interest to the irrevocable trust that we talk about. When you give it to the children, you've done just that. You've made a completed gift to the child. You could have a gift tax consequence associated with it. You don't really control it anymore. You can't sell it without their permission. You could have adverse income tax consequences when you go to sell it, because after all, the kids don't live there, and they wouldn't get the uh, capital gains tax exclusion associated with with selling the property. Plus, you might not get the proceeds back, or at least not all of them, if you needed to buy another house. Folks, the better way to do this is to transfer the property to an irrevocable trust and reserve a life estate when you're going to do it. And there's not all the times that we think you should reserve a life estate. They should be done only sporadically. It's not the best way to go. But they do work, folks. They do work. Learn how you can avoid probate, eliminate estate taxes, keep your money in your family, and protect your assets from the nursing home. Request this brand new guide from Cushing & Dolan, calculating the consequences of a life estate. You can call the phone number 866-848-5699, or you can simply request it from their website, legalexchangeshow.com. Once again, the guide's called Calculating the Consequences of a Life Estate, 866-848-5699, or you can request it at legalexchangeshow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing & Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. 
Text us at 617-362-1385 with your comments and questions about today's show. And let us know what you think about the stories we are covering. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The Financial Exchange is a proud partner of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Massachusetts. Former New England Patriots VP and Chief Marketing Officer Lou Imbriano has generously donated his official Super Bowl 38 championship ring to raise funds for veterans-related programs. Every dollar raised through a special raffle will go directly to veterans. Embriano has teamed up with Swim with a Mission to organize the raffle and raise funds. The goal is to sell 1,000 tickets at $100 apiece, raising $100,000 for veterans. The winner of the ring will be drawn this coming weekend, Super Bowl weekend, and tickets can be purchased at www.swam.org. Mike, we had a couple things that we have to uh, finish up when we're talking about the labor market, correct? We do. What were they? So uh, one piece I wanted to touch on was uh, a piece from Bloomberg on tech CEOs. And effectively, it's saying that, hey, you know, I know these companies are laying people off right now, but they're going to need these people back once, you know, tech is still going to be a major portion of the economy. We are constantly, you know, looking to that sector for growth. And there's a there's a quote in here. Uh, Conversely, there's no denying that these pampered staffers engineered a technology revolution that's brought untold economic and social value to the entire planet. And I just have to take a pause there and say that's the statement, that that's the groundwork for what we're talking about here. I, I'm not saying that I am unimpressed by Google's massive growth or how Facebook has you know turned themselves into a multi-billion dollar company over a pretty short period of time and found innovative ways to make money. But Do we really talk about those companies in a way that talk about untold economic and social value to the entire planet? That's not what comes to mind when I think about Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, and Google. Well, I think it, 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 I'll be fair on this. It really depends on the company. Okay. Certainly. Do I look at Google and say that they've, you know, delivered any kind of economic or social value? More on the economic side. I mean, again, the, the ability to find, like, think about how hard it used to be to find good information information yep okay so i i'll I'll give google credit they made it really easy to Mm -hmm. find stuff have they delivered you know any kind of you know social transformation no it's freaking email and search man like come on i i have an easier time going with google than i do facebook or netflix no see i would actually make the argument as distasteful as things on facebook and twitter can be S- the way that they allow you to get information on things going on around the world and transformational changes that are happening there do provide that kind of social uh, ability to affect things from a social perspective. I think Twitter might. I'm not sure Facebook does. They, they both do in, in yeah. very different ways. Yeah. Okay. Again, I, I'm, I'm not excusing all of the bad that's on those platforms. Sure. But if we're being honest, okay, and you look at just an example that, I've followed closely over the last, you know, gee, probably seven years right now, the conflict in Syria, okay? And some of the stuff that you can get access to in terms of, uh, you know, what's actually going on in the country in real time and being able to direct efforts and assist in different ways based on that, that's pretty freaking meaningful. So, you know, for all of the, you know, Twitter posts that are, you know, oh, I hate you, you suck, this, that, you know, there's a lot of that, but there's also some really good parts, too. Yeah, I, I, I won't disagree there. Um, I think that I look at the last decade of technological innovation, though, and find it a bit disappointing. Oh, I've said it, it's hugely disappointing. I, I, I'm, I'm not debating that in any way, shape, or form. But I'm less disappointed with... I'm less disappointed in Twitter for being what it is... And more disappointed that that's the best of what there is. Because, yeah, again, they're, they're, not every company needs to change the world. Like, sometimes it's fine to just provide a, a product or service, okay? Mm-hmm. No, no one ever looks at, you know, a plumber coming to help you, you know, do something at your house and says, man, why aren't you changing the world? Why are you just, you know, fixing this problem? No, like, sometimes you just need to fix the problem, and that does change the world, right? Like, not everything needs to be... Well, we're doing the greatest good for the most people. 
No, unclog my toilet. <laughs> like, sometimes uh, you just need to fix the immediate problem in front of you. Yeah. So, my issue is that Twitter, okay, there's some good parts of it. There's more bad, in my opinion, and the bad does outweigh the good. But what what's the... I've said this before. For the vintage of VC companies that came of age from 07 to 2012, wh- which ones out there do you actually look at and say... Wow, that is something that changed everything after it. You know, so many people were talking about like Uber and Airbnb, and it's like, no, that's just a different way of booking a way to get from point A to point B or a different place you can stay. Yeah. Transformational companies, in my mind, Intel. What'd you do with the microchip from, you know, 1980 through 20, 2005? Apple, you put a computer in everyone's home. Microsoft, you made it easy to use computers. Like, though. Those are things that are transformation. And I'm not thinking of many in the last 15 years. No, it's a bunch of, well, I want to get a billion users and then serve I ads to them. I think the most you can argue would maybe be Tesla, SpaceX. Yeah. If I'm being honest, like, you know, and if no there's one, one car company that, like, you might disagree with the premise and you, you, they didn't do anything truly innovative in the space, but if there's one company that pushed the world closer to EVs, it's probably Tesla. Yeah, and, and again, they're not even really considered a tech company you know by by most people so i i just think you know what what are our best and brightest working on it's too many disappearing pictures and not enough microchips or whatever's the next vert you know the next microchip it's too many hey i gotta you know build a streaming service and not enough hey i figured out you know, this way so that everyone can have a computer in their home. Yeah. It's it's, it's very underwhelming. You had asked me in our last segment, Mike, uh, about the IT sector. Yes. And it makes up 2% of U.S. employees. What percentage of wages does it make up? Mm. I don't quite have that, but I have something close. Okay. What I do have is in December of 2022, uh, for the private sector, the average hourly earnings for the entire U.S. was $32.93 an hour. Okay. For the tech sector, not tech, but information technology, which is broader than just the tech, so, you know, be it what it is, it was $47.73, so 50% higher than the rest of the country. Hmm. So, I mean, again, that speaks to my point earlier, which was the layoffs that you have seen so far in terms of number of heads, relatively small. In terms of wage impact... Bigger than the 2%. I will now ask you a question, and I will expect an answer. What sector from the BLS unemployment report has the highest average hourly earnings? Financial services? No, Michael. Pretty low. Yeah, that includes all bank tellers and things along No, it's not lines. low. It's, it's still higher than the average, but it's not. I just wanted to make it clear that you were wrong. Don't know. Utilities. Unionized, highly skilled workforce. Think about you're trying to run a power plant. Utilities is the highest of any sector in the overall. Forty eight dollars and forty seven cents is the average wage in the utility sector in the U.S. Fascinating. The lowest. Any guesses? Leisure hospitality. Yeah, twenty dollars and seventy seven cents. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, utilities highest average wage in the country. The more you know. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, it's Wall Street Watch. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at TFE Show. Breaking business news is always first right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Life estates are not simple documents, and while they can be beneficial in some cases, you should be aware of the many pitfalls in using them. There's the potential for you to lose control of your estate, a higher risk of income tax consequences, and hidden gift issues that can arise as well. If you haven't done your planning yet, now's the time to learn about the effects that life estates can have when it comes to protecting your assets. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and request their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Don't leave your assets to chance. Call 866-848-5699 and get your free guide today. Cushing and Dolan have been helping New England families for more than 30 years. Let them help you, too. Call 866-848-5699. 
or request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk, including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide available this month titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0. Mike, one of the provisions in here allows individuals to actually move money from a 529 plan that was supposed to be used for college into a Roth IRA for the beneficiary of the 529. How does it work? Yeah, so this has been a common concern for parents out there is what if I over contribute to a 529 plan, then I've got a bunch of money stuck in this account that I really can't touch until maybe I have grandchildren or, you know, some other scenario. And the Secure Act 2.0 attempts to solve some of that here. They've already changed it so you can use it for uh, secondary education such as uh, private high school and things like that, but this is a specific provision that allows you to move money from a 529 plan to the beneficiary in the form of a Roth IRA, so long as certain conditions are met. One, the account has to been open for 15 years or longer. There's some limits to how much can be done in total over the lifetime, $35,000, and the traditional Roth IRA contribution limits do apply. So only one calendar year, $6,500. They must have earnings to be able to do so. But this is a significant change, and really, in my view at least, solves a lot of the problem and concern about overfunding a 529 plan. Our guide this month is titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0, and there are two ways that you can request it. The first is by calling 800-393-4001. The second way to request it is by going to armstrongadvisory.com. That number again is 800-393-4001, or you can request it at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Time now for Wall Street Watch. A complete look at what's moving markets so far today, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Time now for uh, Wall Street Watch. That's the name of the segment here on the Financial Exchange. And stocks are trading in mixed territory after yet another volatile ride yesterday that ultimately closed in negative territory as investors ready for next Tuesday's big inflation reading. At the moment, the Dow is up by just under a quarter percent or 63 points. S&P 500 is 
ticking higher by three points, and the NASDAQ is off by just over 30% or uh, 44 points. Russell 2000 is flat. Ten-year chair, ten. I can't talk today. Ten-year Treasury yield is up by three basis points at three point seven one percent, and crude oil is up by one and a half percent, trading at seventy-nine dollars and twenty-three cents a barrel. Adidas shares are down by two percent after the German athletic retailer cautioned yesterday it could swing a loss this year after the company terminated its Yeezy partnership with music artist Kanye West. The company said it anticipates a sharp fall in sales for 2023 due to the impact of not selling existing Yeezy inventory. Outside of Yeezy, Adidas is also battling issues with China's market and poor sales from a, sl- a flagship collaboration with Beyonce. Meanwhile, online travel company Expedia reported fourth quarter earnings that missed expectations, citing a jump in cancellations and poor weather during the holiday season. Expedia did note travel demand remained strong despite inflation, and the company generated $2.62 billion in revenue, short of estimates of $2.7 billion. And that stock is down by 7% today. Shares in Yelp are jumping 8% after the Consumer Review platform revealed it generated $309 million in revenue for the fourth quarter, above forecast of 307 while earnings were in line with estimates and PayPal shares are jumping by over 4% after the digital payments company CEO Dan Shulman announced he would retire from the firm at the end of the year after his nine-year tenure. Separately, PayPal revealed mixed fourth quarter results where its earnings beat forecasts and revenue of uh, $7.4 billion came in line with estimates. However, its total payment volume for the fourth quarter came in below analyst forecast i'm tucker silva and that's wall street watch can i ask a legitimate question okay have you seen have you seen the yeezy foam runner shoes yeah 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 a why are these 350 dollars? they look like crocs uh yeezy b does anyone actually run in these they look like running in flip-flops i, I don't think they're really running I, shoes, yeah I michael think, I, I think, what do you call them a runner for then i i, I think that they just have that in their name it's kind of like how Air Jordan is not actually made out of air. I consider that a little bit different. That yeah, is that's much. To that's me. much different. Okay, just wanted to make sure nobody's trying to run in these because it looks like a really good way to break an ankle. Do you think the Chevy Bolt is actually a lightning bolt? I I don't. But when I call a shoe a runner, that's a little bit different than calling a car a bolt. I disconcur. I was just I, I I couldn't even focus the whole segment. I was more concerned that a day after doing a whole segment on some of the most mispronounced names in, you know, business, Tucker can't call Adidas Adidas. No. We're not I, calling I'm Adidas not, Adidas. That I will not do, good sir. Well, I will not we're do that. Either we're going to call Ikea Ikea. Yeah. It's it not going to happen. Ikea. That's exactly my point. Okay. I uh, I just, you know, I guess. This is America. If you don't like it, you can get out. <laughs> Find me, Kay. You can get out. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, Tuker. <laughs> What's in the name anyway? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the U.S. economy, which we always do, but a little bit about where it's going this year. So heading into this year, one of my major concerns, and I think a major concern for a lot of folks was, hey, is there going to be a recession in 2023? Mm. And towards the end of 2022, I, I started to pivot away from this and towards the idea that – Yes, there are signs that you may get a recession at some point, but both U.S. and global growth appear to be rebounding. And as such, you may get that growth rebound that lasts for six to nine months before you end up getting that recession that maybe gets pushed out to 2024 here. Your thoughts, Mike? Well, the very recent data seems to be supporting that. So let's talk about some of those pieces of evidence. Uh, The biggest one that we've talked about was the jobs report on Friday of last week, as well as the last several jobs reports that have basically indicated that, you know, we are still in a hiring spree. And in fact, somehow it's easier to hire people today than it was perhaps three to six months ago. So there's some evidence there. Employers clearly still wanting to find employees, at least in most sectors of the economy. Uh, Areas where, you know, would also indicate that the economy is not quite in a recession uh housing 
seems to be a fair bit of demand for housing still. If you take a look at mortgage applications and things along those lines, there are indications that this could be a robust spring housing market. Lumber prices come down a little bit very recently, but you know through December and January, lumber prices were up. And then auto you know, sales have accelerated. In the auto last sales, month. used vehicle prices. Again, one month of data. So let's not jump to any conclusions here. But you know, when you take all of those together, it's. I, I think it's fair. If it were just one month of data on one data set, sure. Then you look at it and say, well, we got to see more. When it's one month of home sales data, auto sales data, jobs data gas prices, lumber price. When you add it all up, you say, oh, there's something that's happening broadly in the economy right now. That's something where you don't need the uh, the longitudinal, you know, the time you know, effect. You don't need to see multiple time periods to say, yeah, there might be something that's going on right now. Now, oil prices have been range bound since mid-November, uh, have not really mm-hmm. gotten above 80 bucks a barrel. So yeah. there's you know some contradictory evidence there to that to that story. And like I said, lumber prices were on a tear, but came down pretty recently, uh, I think by more than 10% just over the last couple of weeks. So again, these trends can reverse, but we've been talking about them for you know the better part of a couple of months here, and it seems like it's starting to gain some popularity here that, hey, th- this might be the trajectory. What does not seem to be getting interpreted, however, is that such a turnaround would result in higher interest rates by the Fed and more tightening by the Federal Reserve. I'm not sure. I mean, did you see what happened with rates in the last week? Where do we go? Ten years a little bit higher. Ten years Uh, moved up by a quarter percent. Where are we on Fed funds futures? Uh, Also moved up by a quarter percent in terms of the terminal rate. Okay. Like you've, You've seen, you know, a little bit of movement on that side of things. So... I think that, in my opinion now, the bigger risk to the U.S. economy this year is a resurgence in inflation rather than a recession. I think both are possible, but I would be in the, hey, 60% chance that you have, you know, higher inflation this year, 25% chance that you end up with a recession this year, 15% chance, or 20% chance that you get a soft landing, 5% chance of, actually, no, I'll go 0% chance of stagflationary hell this year. There's nothing right now that's pointing to a growth slowdown while inflation rebounds. Yeah. It, it also raises an interesting question as to how markets respond to, you know, last year equity markets responded to a Fed that had to basically quadruple their uh, rate increasing trajectory. They, they were planning on raising rates by three quarters of a percent. They raised rates by four and a half percent. Yes, how do markets react to a Fed that needs to go from, you know, 75 basis points of increases to one and a quarter percent of increases? I would say in a very bad case scenario, that's where you could land. I, I don't know. And I'm not sure. And it's also how does that affect longer term rates? If the Fed has to take you know short term rates up to six percent. Do longer term rates go to four and a half or five or do they top out at four? These are the things that are going to feed into all of this. Because where are mortgage rates? by june of this year i I think that's a pretty important question and not even just mortgage think about it again we've talked about this before but for investors okay if you have the chance to go out and get a 10-year treasury at four and a half percent or buy a new property with a four and a half percent cap rate do you want all the hassle of being a landlord to get the same thing you can get from the u.s government for doing nothing long term no but how quickly does it take people to respond? We talk about you know everyone being perfectly logical and no, thinking it, through all these No, but it's all decisions. on the margins. Yep. All it takes is that marginal person yep. to say, nope, I'm not going to do this. Yep. And then you get it sliding. So I, I continue to look at the situation now. And yeah, I think a recession is still possible this year. But my bigger concern is that inflation continues to come down for the next few months, you know, in terms of year over year. But somewhere in that April to July time frame, we start to see that year-over-year number uptick again. Let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, we're talking Lyft, going for a little bit of a uh, little bit of a slide today. It's, it's a tough day for Lyft shareholders, and we'll tell you what's going on there. 
Watch the show every day on Twitch TV, Facebook, and our website, FinancialExchangeShow.com. We're breaking down the biggest business stories of the day only on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The SECURE Act became law in 2019, but a new bill has updated some key areas. As of January 1st of this year, it's time to take another look at how these changes may affect your financial situation. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. And whether it's the new age for required minimum distributions, how RMDs are affected if you have a Roth 401k account, or changes to catch-up contributions to any employer-sponsored retirement plan, we have a brand new guide called Understanding the SECURE Act 2.0. This guide provides important information as to how any or all of these issues may affect your personal financial strategy. Call us right now at 800-393-4001 and request your free guide today, or you can request it at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. Life estates are not simple documents, and while they can be beneficial in some cases, you should be aware of the many pitfalls in using them. There's the potential for you to lose control of your estate, a higher risk of income tax consequences, and hidden gift issues that can arise as well. If you haven't done your planning yet, now's the time to learn about the effects that life estates can have when it comes to protecting your assets. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and request their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Don't leave your assets to chance. Call 866-848-5699 and get your free guide today. Cushing and Dolan have been helping New England families for more than 30 years. Let them help you, too. Call 866-848-5699 or request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. Miss any of the show? You can catch up at your convenience by visiting FinancialExchangeShow.com and clicking the on-demand icon where you'll find all of our interviews and full shows. This is your home for the latest business and financial news in New England and around the country. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. This segment of the Financial Exchange is brought to you in part by the U.S. Virgin Islands Department of Tourism. And right now... You can take advantage of a great promotion if you travel to St. Croix. Book any hotel for a minimum of five nights and receive at least a 10% discount on your stay. 
as well as a $200 air credit per person ages 16 and up. Use the code VIBE2023 when booking. Come to America's Caribbean Paradise. Go to visitusvi.com for more details and to book your trip. That's visitusvi.com. What, what are you pointing at, Michael? Nothing. Okay. Uh, lift shares plummeting today, down 35% after issuing disappointing guidance. The stock now trading at $10.46 a share shortly after its IPO was up near 80 so from its peak down about 87%. Uh, and even since its 2021 peak, where it got up around 66 bucks a share, you're talking still off you know, 70, 82%, somewhere in that ballpark. So it just is a company that is really struggling right now, only worth about $3.8 billion in market cap. And what's the problem here, Michael? Uh, it, it's particularly interesting in the context that you know, Uber reported earlier this week and didn't really disappoint on earnings. And we seem to be having a little bit of a you know, per, perhaps just an execution issue here. I mean, for me personally, when I'm looking for a ride, I open up the Uber app and I open up the Lyft app. And there is zero difference between one versus the other to me. The only real difference between these two companies that I can think of is the fact that Uber has a food delivery business and Lyft does not, um, and the fact that Uber is more globally present than Lyft is. But that, to me, doesn't you know, uh, completely explain such a wide divergence in performance. Yeah, I mean, I, again, it, it does feel more like an execution problem where you, know, you, you typically see competitors report around the same week. Yep. You know, UPS and FedEx are usually same week, same you know, so on and so forth. Um, I think that with Lyft, you dig into the numbers here; they're still not profitable. Okay, and and really not even close. Things are actually getting worse. Okay, uh, they aren't cash flow positive. Okay, it's again, there's there's not really much that looks good there. Uh, their margins are, are they getting worse? Let me take a quick look. Margins are eh, getting a little bit worse over the last three quarters now after improving for much of 2022. I, I think if here's the silver lining. You found one? Yes. Unlike a lot of other companies that we've looked at in the tech adjacent space or believed to be tech space, Lyft is not expensive by most metrics now. Mm. It's trading less than 1x sales. If its projected forward earnings end up coming you know, to fruition over the next year, it's only trading 11 times forward earnings. So it's not one where you look at it and say, hey, if they can actually figure out a way to make money, okay, it doesn't look too crazy. The question is going to be, do those projected earnings come to fruition? And if they don't, do they have to do a cash raise, either you know, a debt or equity offering? Do they dilute shareholders? I mean, it's th those are the questions that you start asking then. Yeah, but it, I will say this is one of the very few times I can remember in recent history where we've looked at valuations on a tech, tech-ish company and said, "This doesn't look insane." No, but here's the other here's the other problem that they that they do face. They've got about one point seven billion dollars in cash and other short-term investments on their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. Their cash flow they're burning through around two hundred and fifty million bucks a year right now. So yeah, they don't necessarily need to do a cash raise right now, but. Again, like those are the real numbers where it's like, okay, forget all the accounting gimmicks. What do you actually have on hand and what are you spending? I just go back to, I mean, I haven't seen a Lyft commercial on TV in I don't know how long. No, I've never seen one. What I, I saw a few back when they were really ripping into Uber for being an evil company. Uh, like that's, that's when you saw a few of them way back when. I remember it was all the Uber guys in like black suits. But where is all this money going? You, ride, you operate ride sharing. Building the proper estate plan not only protects your assets from the nursing home, but also helps you avoid probate and potentially eliminate estate taxes. However, if you choose to use a life estate, you need to be aware of the many problems it can cause. Life estates are complicated. They could create significant issues such as losing control of your estate. So call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. In it, you'll learn about strategies you can use to make sure that you create the right document for your estate plan. Call right now, 866-848-5699 and re request your free guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates, 866 
848-5699, or you can simply request it on their website at legalexchangeshow.com. The proceeding was paid for, and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Massachusetts has some of the highest child care costs in the country. I believe, actually, they're the highest cost state. The only uh, region that's higher is the District of Columbia, which, of course, is not a state. And the uh, governor indicating that she potentially wants to dedicate some resources to trying to fix the issue here. What are they talking about? I, I just Before we even go there, I have to just point out that the average cost in Massachusetts, according to the Economic Policy Institute, is 20913 the next highest is that as, a, is that per day? Uh, no, that that's an average twenty thousand dollars per year. Okay. Um, the next highest, of course, California, is less than seventeen thousand dollars. What are we doing here in Massachusetts that makes it four thousand dollars a year more expensive to send your kid to child care in Massachusetts compared to California? It's got to be really good child care, right? What is happening? It's the best. What on? Earth, you can't point to real estate. You can't point to labor costs. You can't point to the student to child ratio. No, California has all those ratio. things. It's got all the same things, and we are way more expensive. It is just hugely problematic. In terms of what they're talking about here, um, basically the point is that there are now a lot of people actually paying attention to this, but I don't see any real proposals coming out yet. Uh, they've talked about expanded child tax credit voice support for a common start legislation basically putting together universal early childhood education that might be something like universal pre-k or something along those lines in the state but i just none of these seem to be getting at the sources of the problem which i don't i don't claim to have an answer to but don't pour a whole bunch of more money into this until you find out why are we four thousand dollars a month more a year more expensive than any other state in the country Right? Like, nothing's more expensive than in California. Doesn't make any sense. It's frustrating. I would tend to agree. Look, it's, it's all well and good to try to help this situation, but, again, don't throw more money at the problem until you can tell us why it's so expensive and how this will actually... Double the cost of Maine. What? I'm going to send my kids to Maine child care, then. Quick break here. Hour two's coming up in a bit. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. This is Tucker Silva with the Financial Exchange Show, and I'm joined today by estate planning attorney Todd Lutsky from the law firm of Cushing & Dolan with your quick tip of the day. And today, we're talking about the use of life estates and your primary residence. Todd, who should consider reserving a life estate for their primary residence? So because of the one problem associated with life estates, and that is that when you sell it, you get a portion of the assets back, which could make it at risk for the nursing home again if you do sell it during your life. Because of that, I think the only time you should use this is, one, if you are in a two-family home and you're renting it. That way the rent comes directly to you because as a life tenant, you're entitled to the income from the property. Two, you might be getting one of those VA benefits or in your particular town, you might get a real estate tax abatement. If you get the real estate tax abatement, you need to reserve the life estate in order to preserve that real estate tax abatement. And the third reason you would reserve a life estate is when you have a mortgage, right? A lot of people don't think they can do irrevocable trusts if they have a mortgage on their property. Well, you can, but when you transfer the property to the irrevocable trust, you need to reserve the life estate so as not to trigger the due on sale clause on your mortgage. This way you can keep your mortgage and still do your Medicaid estate planning. Learn how you can avoid probate, eliminate estate taxes, keep your money in your family, and of course, protect your assets from the nursing home. Request this brand new guide from Cushing and Dolan. It's called Calculating the Consequences of a Life Estate. You can call 866-848-5699 or you can 
can request it from LegalExchangeShow.com. Once again, 866-848-5699 or request the guide online at their website, LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Armstrong do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. This is the Money Matters Radio Network, WBNW 1120 AM and W275-CM FM, Concord, Boston, the Money Matters Radio Network. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk, including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Life estates are not simple documents, and while they can be beneficial in some cases, you should be aware of the many pitfalls in using them. There's the potential for you to lose control of your estate, a higher risk of income tax consequences, and hidden gift issues that can arise as well. If you haven't done your planning yet, now's the time to learn about the effects that life estates can have when it comes to protecting your assets. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and request their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Don't leave your assets to chance. Call 866-848-5699 and get your free guide today. Cushing and Dolan have been helping New England families for more than 30 years. Let them help you too. Call 866-848-5699 or request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide out this month titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0. Mike, one of the big changes in the Secure Act 2.0 is that RMD ages are on the move again. What's happening with them? They are. So uh, this kind of slipped under the radar last second at the end of last year, so it hasn't got as much attention outside of certain circles. But previously, RMD age was 70 and a half. It got moved back a few years ago to 72. Uh, Now they're moving it again. So for those born between 1951 and 1959, your new required minimum distribution age is 73, If you were born 1960 or later, you're now moving to an age 75 for required minimum distribution, which creates a whole bunch of new opportunities that weren't previously available. Yeah, and and certainly when you look at this, it gives you the ability to adjust and manage your tax burden longer into your retirement, potentially employing things like Roth IRA conversions for additional years than previously was allowed. It does, yeah. So Roth IRA conversions have been a big topic in financial planning for the last few years. And effectively, this just gives you more flexibility when it comes to those. Other changes regarding RMDs, you used to need to take one on a Roth 401k account. They did away with that entirely. So a lot of changes in this new bill, and we cover all of them in our new guide on security. Act 2.0. The guide is titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0, and there are two ways to request it. First, you can call 800 
800-393-4001, or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. That number again is 800-393-4001, or request it at armstrongadvisory.com. Com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. For 40 years, Cancer Support Community has been a relentless ally for anyone impacted by cancer with free services provided online and in person with their newest location in Massachusetts. Connect with Cancer Support Community Massachusetts for free emotional support, educational resources, patient navigation, financial counseling, and more. 617-797-3391. CancerSupportMass.org. CancerSupportMass.org. The Financial Exchange is produced by Money Matters Radio and is hosted by employees of the Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor that provides investment advisory services. All opinions expressed are solely those of the hosts, do not reflect the opinions of Armstrong Advisory or anyone else, and do not guarantee profit. Investments can lose money. This program does not offer any specific financial or investment advice. Please consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong and Money Matters Radio do not compensate each other for referrals and are not affiliated. This is the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Your exclusive look at business and financial news affecting your day, your city, your world. Stay informed and up-to-date about economic and market trends. Plus, get breaking business news every day. The Financial Exchange is a proud partner of the Disabled American Veterans Department of Massachusetts. You, too, can support our great American heroes by visiting financialexchangeshow.com slash DAV. And now, it's time for the Financial Exchange with Chuck Zotta and Mike Armstrong. Well, as we wrap up what really was just kind of a... a, a Boring week overall. I mean, let's call a spade a spade. There wasn't much economic data. The earnings from this week were not nearly as exciting as last week. Pretty volatile, though. Yes and no. Okay. So here's the thing. We closed last Friday at 41.36 on the S&P 500. Right now, we're at 4,077. We're down 1.5%. So it's been a ride to get to this point, but it hasn't really taken us too far overall the dow is off or is rather up 37 points today the nasdaq is down 87 uh we've got the 10-year treasury continuing to sell off now up to 3.72 percent oil west texas intermediate is up a dollar 36 a barrel to 79.42 and we've got gold the yellow metal down 670 ounce to 1871 anything of interest to you there mike i like gold like you like actually like, like just, it like yeah just like holding it thinking about it I find gold to be jumping very overrated into large to hold coins of it. actually that would probably hurt doing a little Scrooge McDuck right like, it wouldn't actually be fun no no it'd be you know painful. and think about how much you'd have to if you put like a gold swimming pool on the second floor of your house think about how much that would like you need to support that thing yeah, with the weight of gold a lot of extra framing it's a lot of extra work you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a live look at Mike Armstrong right now. Correct. Uh, let's talk a little bit about oil. So Russia announced this morning that they are going to be cutting their oil production by 500,000 barrels a day, or about 5% next month. Uh, this initially sent crude prices about 2% higher, then they came back to flat, now they're up about 1%, as we noted. And interestingly, I'm not sure that this is actually much of a change for Russia in their policy, but more formalizing hey, we have, we've had this target of about 10,500,000 barrels a day. We've really only been producing about 10 million. Mm -hmm. And now we're just going to formalize that 10 million number. And I wonder if part of it is, I think there are two things at play here. The first is, there are really two countries that are buying the majority of Russian oil right now. India, China? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they're doing it at huge discounts. Yeah, a good 20%. More. Yeah. Okay. I've seen as much as $30 discounts still, wow. which means you're getting, you know, 40% off of the current price. And so 
again, Russia knows, hey, we basically have two places that we can sell this stuff. And so I think part of it is, okay, can we get that price up at all? But also, I think it's a tacit admission that, hey, without a lot of the European and U.S. technology and expertise to, you know, help just drill new equipment. wells, we might not be able to maintain production the way that we wanted to previously anyways, and this gives us a way to at least kind of save face on it. I, I was going to say what else you make of this in light of the uh, very fortunate winter uh, across all of Europe and, and, well, frankly, most of the globe that did not result in a whole lot of nat gas demand and, you know, the problems that were anticipated for Germany and others. If there's anything to take away from that in, in regards to Russia's decision here, I, I suspect there, it's two different sides of a coin. Yeah, not, not much, just because Russia can't send gas to Europe anymore. Yep. Physically can't because the Nord Stream pipelines are blown up. Yep. They don't have pipeline infrastructure of that capacity running to the east, to China. They have long-term contracts to supply China with a whole lot more nat gas. But right now, you, you can't just put nat gas in an oil pipeline. You know? doesn't work that way it's it yeah. doesn't quite work that way so ultimately it's something where I, I don't know what kind of revenue they're getting on the nat gas side uh, uh, if you know th- th- i'm sure there's some but it's not much so i don't know that i make too much of it but i i think that ultimately the economy of russia is you know very dependent still on the fossil fuel industry and they have a limited market to sell those products and so they're having to sell discounts now yeah it'll be interesting to see in 2023 and 2024 what sort of things start showing up in russian production of all sorts of things so russian airlines we talked about right you know their ability to get parts to service their planes is going to be difficult Uh, any sort of manufacturing in russia is just going to be challenged based on a lack of global supply of anything you need to develop new pieces or you know just service your equipment even is going to be challenging and so we didn't see that breakdown in 2022 at all it hasn't been very long though 2023 2024 do you start to hear any of that sort of thing i suspect it might still take longer than that Let's talk about uh, the U.S. and China. The U.S., this is the headline from the Wall Street Journal. U.S. is poised to further tighten technology exports to China after balloon incident. So we're not going to be sending balloons to China anymore? I don't think they mean technology balloons. But, uh, yeah, they're they're basically looking at the one area that they've already been looking at and saying we're going to tighten export controls further, semiconductors, uh, anything along those lines. My question would be, where else is there to tighten? We talked, was it yesterday that we talked about how the U.S. and China had conducted the most trade ever in dollar terms it was, last yeah. year? Yeah, that was yesterday. So despite all of the tensions that are present right now, when you actually look at the amount of trade that's being conducted between the U.S. and China, it's at an all-time high. Mm-hmm. And so the point that I'll make is that, look, you can make a balloon out of most anything. Okay? Okay. You can. Lead. You can make balloons out of just about anything. All right? You fill them with enough helium, you'll figure out how to get it to float at a certain altitude, right? Unless you want to actually meaningfully shift the trade relationship between the U.S. and China, you're not going to have the impact that you want on, you know, China being able to adapt other technology for military needs. You could certainly say hey, we don't want our equipment falling into these hands, you know, specific military equipment and stuff like that. But, well, then let's get outside of export controls for a minute here. Is this event enough to move the needle on something like TikTok or such as Chinese companies still publicly trading in U.S. markets? I mean, I would have killed TikTok a while ago. I would have, too, but we're still sitting here debating it in Congress. We're talking about, oh, yeah, can, can't be used on government uh, phones. Is this enough to kill it in the United States? Should be. I hope so. Should be. I mean, if, if the goal is, hey, we're trying to Sorry, kids. restrict uh, you know, the potential for espionage in our country, okay, yeah, you can't go after a, a spy balloon. Like It's a pretty low-tech piece of uh, thing that you're doing here. But let's go after the area that's been identified for years now as a potentially high risk for espionage and go after that. Um, Public markets is a different story. But again, I mean, if you're looking to go after things, 
prevent U.S. Uh, investment companies from pouring private equity money into Chinese companies. Uh, those are a couple actual ways to do it. Right, because again, if the thing on all of this that you come back to is that money and goods to it, money more than goods, but money's fungible. Once it ends up in Chinese company A, if the Chinese Communist Party says, hey, company A, you have to give money to you know this military contractor in China, they're going to do it. Yep. So there's no guarantee that your investment in a Chinese company stays where it, you know, where it was originally Started. made in, in, in that respect. So, yeah, I mean, look, as I've said there, when you look at the domestic political consumption for both China and the U.S., the winning outcome for politicians in both countries is to continue to be more hawkish towards the other one. And that is something that ultimately I do fear is going to push us towards the potential for a greater confrontation at some point. Uh, there's nothing that is present that can change that equilibrium right now. You can't just snap your fingers and say, okay, let's, right. let's try to cooperate more. I mean, again, it's, it is what it is. So I, I think that we're heading towards more of these things, not necessarily balloons, but there's going to be something else. There's going to be something else is where I think we're going. Let's take a quick break here. When we come back, we've got trivia, and then we're talking about retirement. For your chance to win our daily trivia contest, text us at 617-362-1385 and use keyword Encore. Complete rules are available at financialexchangeshow.com. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. The SECURE Act was signed into law three and a half years ago, but as of January 1st of this year, there's some important changes that may affect retirees and those who might be planning to retire. This is Mike Armstrong from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and our new guide called Understanding the SECURE Act 2.0 was written to help address these changes so that you can make the best decision for your financial situation. As an example, the RMD age will now be 73 through year 2032, and then beginning in 2033, it'll be pushed to age 75. This could affect your tax bracket and the amount you might have to pay over your lifetime. Learn more about the Secure Act 2.0 by requesting this brand new guide today. You can call us at 800-393-4001. That number again is 800-393-4001 or you can request it by visiting our website armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. Life estates are not simple documents, and while they can be beneficial in some cases, you should be aware of the many pitfalls in using them. There's the potential for you to lose control of your estate, a higher risk of income tax consequences, and hidden gift issues that can arise as well. If you haven't done your planning yet, now's the time to learn about the effects that life estates can have when it comes to protecting your assets. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and request their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Don't leave your assets to chance. Call 866-848-5699 and get your free guide today. Cushing and Dolan have been helping New England families for more than 30 years. Let them help you too. Call 866-848-5699 or request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. 
My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk, including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. This is your home for the most comprehensive coverage of the economy and the trends on Wall Street. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Trivia is brought to you by Encore Boston Harbor. Visit EncoreBostonHarbor.com and see for yourself why Encore is a Forbes five-star award winner for both hotel and spa. Well, the big game's almost here. On Sunday, the Chiefs will face the Eagles, and they'll battle it out to see which team is crowned champions in the NFL universe. Uh, sadly, there are many people out there who would rather watch 80 for Brady, which is a new movie uh, that's been making the rounds out there, uh, which Tom Brady does appear in. Our question today how many movies has Tom Brady appeared in? Once again, how many movies has Tom Brady appeared in? If you know the answer, be the, uh, let's go with uh, the seventh person to text us at 617-362-1385 with the correct answer, and you'll win a Financial Exchange Show t-shirt and be registered to win a $100 gift card to Encore Boston Harbor. Be sure to include the keyword Encore in your text, and we'll give away the Encore gift card for this week in the next segment. 617-362-1385, and the seventh correct response will be our winner. See complete contest rules at financialexchangeshow.com. Is this like scripted films? It does it include like a documentary that no, maybe he's interviewed in? film, like featured films. Okay. Yeah. No TV, no documentaries, featured films. I'm trying to think of how many I know that he's been in. Yeah, well, well let, let, maybe you and I can guess after the next segment when we've already got a winner. 80 for Brady, by the way, did have the uh, did open in the top spot for the week of February 3rd to uh, 9th. Uh, again, it did uh, $17.8 million. Could be the most profitable movie of 2020, 2023. I'm trying to get uh, some budget information on it to know what they uh, spent making it, but... Uh, I can't imagine all that much. I bet more than you. Give me your guess. I, I actually have no idea like what a typical movie goes for without special effects. So I, Give me I, your guess. I have no idea. I, I know, but that's why I'm asking you to guess. I'm not asking you to give me the right number. I'm asking for a guess. 70 million. 28. Okay. 28 million. So it's going to end up making money after yeah. you know a couple weeks here. So probably not. Actually, I have a question. Is Tom Brady a big enough name that this will actually do anything internationally? Or Nothing. is it just... No, stop. Maybe not maybe in Brazil. No, not anymore. That's true. I, I guess I'm thinking in terms of, you know, Space Jam. Big no. international numbers. No. Mm -hmm. Is Tom Brady that guy, even though football's just a U.S. sport? I think there's enough hostility towards American football that it will not do well overseas. Next question. Out of the $17 million that it did, what percentage of that do you think was in New England? Oh, you've got that? No, I don't. Oh. I'm just asking how much you think was in New England. I'm going to say two-thirds. It, it feels – that might be light. might be like 75%. Mm. No. I, I think I think there's probably a lot of Florida. You think there's going. a lot of South Florida in there too? There, that's a big state. And a lot of New Englanders that now live there. Aside from those two states, <laughs> no, 3%. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, retirement. So there's a piece in Bloomberg this week titled, How a Good Retirement Risks Becoming Just for the Privileged. Let's start first with uh, just establishing a standard here, Mike. What's a good retirement? 
I think we have to put it in financial terms if we're going to talk about yeah, this Yeah, what, what's – no, well, here, here's my interpretation of a good retirement, okay? You can retire in your 60s and not have to change your lifestyle to the downside meaningfully over the course of your retirement. Okay. I was trying to put it in financial terms for living here in the Northeast, but, yeah, I, I would say if you can maintain the same quality standard of living – while not having to work until your 70s, that's a pretty good standard. For yeah, maintain your standard of living, but not have to work into your 70s. I think that's that's okay. that, 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 that's how I would it's define a good, a good retirement. Uh, what are we seeing in terms of how that type of retirement is actually playing out these days? Well, in a few different ways, it is becoming less affordable to make that happen. Uh, first and foremost, life expectancies are a lot longer. So that is, I think, the underlying problem that exists out there and because of that longer life expectancy uh the pension obligations of both you know corporations to a limited degree but of the state uh are, are growing and so if you think about social security funding for example or you know take a look overseas and talk about other government pension forms or just you know federal government employees for example the cost to fund those sorts of things is pretty darn high um and then those that aren't covered by those systems anymore uh, are, are a large and growing pop, you know, portion of the population, which seems to be threatening the system as a whole. Is let, let, Let's look at this in the context just of human history. Because, uh, again, I, I, I find that contextualizing these things helps. The idea of retirement in general, the way that we think of it today pretty new idea it's a pretty new thing yeah okay until really the last two maybe three generations i'll say the silent generation you know the generation that fought in world war ii was probably the first generation that really went through a conventional retirement mm -hmm. the way we think of it today prior to that most people you look at like where they worked you know through you know 1920s 1930s 1940s either a in the latter part of that you're covered by you know a, a corporate pension and that's taking care of your retirement in most cases. And before that, most people didn't work for big companies. And it was just, hey, you know, I work at this store and my kid takes it over and I just don't do quite as much. And I, you know, keep going yep. into the store every day and, you know, still work. And, you know, we, the family makes income and it's family income. It wasn't the same thing as it is today. You want a really good future trivia question? Tucker does. The first person to ever receive Social Security. Item A. Fuller. Whoo! She nice. paid out. She paid in twenty seven dollars and thirteen cents, I think, and got twenty thousand plus out of it. Yeah, she uh, <laughs> she received the first bad ever that Social memorized? Security check. Imagine knowing that answer. January thirty first, nineteen forty, uh, of Ludlow, Vermont. Yeah, is that why you knew? No, I've looked it up before. Yeah. Uh, so, in either case, what you're finding across the globe is there is tremendous and, and understandable, but tremendous. Uh, pushback to changing retirement ages, for example, or really any measure that would change the funding and system of retirement income across the globe. Uh, but it's widely accepted that, hey, this is going to be necessary. There's going to be some sort of funding change needed if you're going to make these systems continue to work, whether it's Social Security here domestically or the riots that are going on in France when it comes to changing the retirement age. There is tremendous pushback when it comes to any of that understandably so but when you look at life expectancies today compared to when these systems were all invented it just doesn't work no and, and again there are three levers that you can pull you can cut benefits not popular you can raise the retirement age not popular or you can raise taxes also not popular yep so do all three and get it over with. other than that the, again you can't really sugarcoat it that's that's basically the deal now you can you know, play around with, okay, are we going to raise taxes on this group or that group or everyone? Are we going to raise the retirement age? For They're all different things that you can consider, but you have to play around with those levers in order to make the numbers actually work. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no magic formula. You can't just, you know, sprinkle a little dust on it and poof, retirement for everyone. And frankly, in, in the fairness camp, you have to do it far in advance enough so that you're not breaking the contract with the existing people. Now you got to be doing it uh, in general. You probably don't want to be impacting people age 50 and up. I would agree. You know, it's already a contract that they've agreed to. You, you don't you don't change that midway.
Building the proper estate plan not only protects your assets from the nursing home, but also helps you avoid probate and potentially eliminates estate taxes. However, if you choose to use a life estate, you need to be aware of the many problems it can cause. Life estates are complicated. They could create significant issues, such as losing control of your estate. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and get their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. In it, you'll learn about strategies you can use to make sure that you create the right document for your estate plan. Call right now, 866-848-5699, and request your free guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. That's 866-848-5699. Or you can request the guide online from their website, LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk, including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Hi, this is Chuck and Mike from the Armstrong Advisory Group, and we have a guide out this month titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0. Mike, one of the big changes in the Secure Act 2.0 is that RMD ages are on the move again. What's happening with them? They are. So uh, this kind of slipped under the radar last second at the end of the last year, so it hasn't got as much attention outside of certain circles. But previously, RMD age was 70 and a half. It got moved back a few years ago to 72. Uh, now they're moving it again. So for those born between 1951 and 1959, your new required minimum distribution age is 73. If you were born 1960 or later, you're now moving to an age 70. 75 for required minimum distribution, which creates a whole bunch of new opportunities that weren't previously available. Yeah, and, and certainly when you look at this, it gives you the ability to adjust and manage your tax burden longer into your retirement, potentially employing things like Roth IRA conversions for additional years than previously was allowed. It does, yeah. So Roth IRA conversions have been a big topic in financial planning for the last few years. And effectively, this just gives you more flexibility when it comes to those. Other changes regarding RMDs, you used to need to take one on a Roth 401k account. They did away with that entirely. So a lot of changes in this new bill, and we cover all of them in our new guide on Secure Act 2.0. The guide is titled Understanding the Secure Act 2.0, and there are two ways to request it. First, you can call 800-393-4001, or you can request it online at armstrongadvisory.com. That number again is 800-393-4001, or request it at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. 
If you missed any of today's show, catch up whenever you want on our YouTube page. Find daily show segments and full shows. Just go to YouTube.com and search for The Financial Exchange. This is your home for breaking business and financial news. This is The Financial Exchange Radio Network. How many movies has Tom Brady appeared in? You guys going to guess or what? We found out the answer, so. Oh, cool. So not fun. Okay, Cheated. Cool. Uh, the answer, couldn't wait, Tucker. Yeah, you guys aren't fun. Uh, the answer would be four. Tom Brady has made his film debut in 2003 comedy Stuck on You, which is probably the toughest one here, playing Computer Geek number one. In 2015, Tom Brady played himself in the Entourage movie. Brady played himself again in Ted 2. And finally, Brady appears himself again in the newest film, 80 for Brady. So our uh, winner of the Financial Exchange t-shirt today was Bert from Rowley, Mass. And our winner of the Encore $100 gift card for the week is Bob from Boston. So congrats to both winners there. And trivia is brought to you by Encore Boston Harbor. Visit EncoreBostonHarbor.com. And see for yourself why Encore is a Forbes five-star award winner for both hotel and spa. Is 80 for Brady a pun that I just don't get, or is it just because the words rhyme that they put them together? Eh, a little bit of both. What's the pun that I don't get? They're old. I don't know. And it rhymes. But it's not like... It's for, like, older ladies, so... Yeah, I know. Yeah. 80 for but Brady. But it doesn't... It doesn't... Like, it's just because it rhymes. Yeah. Okay. I thought I was missing a joke or something on it. Uh, big brands keep raising prices with limited shopper resistance. So that's the headline in a New York Times article. And it sums up the state of Americans pretty well right now. Hey, look at how expensive this is. Here's my card. Yeah. It's been our behavior with cars for like a decade now. But uh, it, it is interesting to see that, you know, Pepsi, Unilever, Chipotle, all these companies have been dramatically raising their prices and frankly, you it, haven't really seen much of a dip in sales. No. Pepsi, just as the example that uh, you referenced there, they said that they raised their prices 16% in the fourth quarter from a year earlier. Sales volume, down 2%. You do the math, that's a net 14% increase in revenue. You're going to take that trade-off all day. Sell less stuff and make more money? Fine. That's, like, they're, they're happy to do that. The question in, in all of this becomes, when does that break? that you can't raise those prices anymore. Why, are wages not going up by 16%? They're not. Right. Okay. They're not. And even though I, I will say, like, here's the thing about Doritos. Every time I have one, it reminds me how much I like them again. They are pretty delicious. They are delicious. Um, what, Cool Ranch or regular? Don't care, but I prefer the Cool Ranch. Yeah, Cool Ranch is... Cool, cool Ranch is my yeah. favorite. Yep. I, I think the fact is, look, I, I'm not going to put Pepsi and uh, Unilever into this category, but there is a you know, category of Americans who the inflation has not dramatically impacted their spending yet. If you're earning $50,000 a year, the inflation that you've already seen has already changed your behavior, right? You, yes. You've already had to start shopping elsewhere. You've already needed to start penny pinching. But if you're, you know, as Chipotle mentioned, if you're earning $100,000 plus per year, you're seemingly still very willing to spend on these products. And so in spite of you know the 2% uh, sales volumes that Pepsi experienced with some segment of their customers, it's more than made up for by those that are more than willing to pay. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John, and the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights, hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter that contest. Visit that, excuse me, go to visitusvi.com. That's visitusvi.com. Mike, are you a big cauliflower fan? 
I can get on board with some cauliflower. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I don't know that anybody's a huge cauliflower fan. Like, you, kind of taste yeah. neutral. You know, it's amazing that I'm seeing more and more pop up at restaurants is buffalo cauliflower. It's sure. everywhere. Oh my Love god. It. Well, cauliflower is just a vegetable that you can do anything to, and it's just going to taste like whatever you do. Yeah, it just absorbs the taste. The only downside. I don't spend a whole lot of time eating plain cauliflower. No, the only downside you never want to cook it in your own house. Does because it stank? The smell is horrific. Really? Oh I've only my done goodness! A couple of times. I don't really. Oh, you got to open all the windows for the rest of the day. Hmm. Okay. Got to do it. But Chick Fil A, they're going to be testing out a fried cauliflower sandwich in three markets, and unlike the uh, you know plant based uh, meat stuff and everything, they're saying no. This is Actual just fried cauliflower. cauliflower vegetable. This is the approach that you take this if you want to make a veggie sandwich. I I looked up to see if the local Chick Fil A was. Uh, gonna have this because this sounds really good to me i think especially right now this i I understand why burger king rolled out the beyond impossible the impossible whopper i'm sure that it brought people to their restaurant i I bought one that was at the beginning stage you do not do that and make a big splash right now about that you go do something boring like cauliflower and just have a new vegetarian sandwich that's just cauliflower I think right. most vegetarians can get on board with that. I think they're on to something here. Yeah. And, this and, is going to catch on. And honestly, even, again, I fried cauliflower, you throw a little buffalo sauce on there, it's freaking delicious. Absolutely. Well, I mean, again, if, if I'm going to have Chick-fil-A, I, I think that, generally speaking, the cauliflower Chick-fil-A is only marginally better for me than the chicken Chick-fil-A. So oh, I'm yeah. So probably going to still stick with the chicken Chick-fil-A. But I can appreciate them doing this more than an impossible slice of chicken or a, a beyond fake meat chicken. I, I just just fry a vegetable. Yeah, still just, tastes pretty good. Just fry a veggie. Call it a day. You can deep fry anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Almost anything. Not in my house. I'm not going to do that. You got a deep fryer? No. No, It's it just seems, it's always seemed like just way too much of a hassle for the output. Like, I got too one. messy. I, uh, we, you have a deep fryer? Yeah, we, we, <laughs> of course you'll, you do. You'll appreciate this. We, we registered for one for our wedding. My 96-year-old grandfather at the time got it for us. Nice. So we, we've used it maybe a dozen times since then. You know, it's, it's not something that you pull out every week because it well, does yeah. get messy. There's a lot of cleanup. But I remember there was one Super Bowl where we did a bunch of fried ravioli that we yeah. did in the deep fryer. Perfect. There was another one where we did a bunch of onion rings in the deep fryer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta be honest. That that's just the type of thing where I'll I'll deal with the takeout. It's it's better when you make it at home, Mike. You can't well, everything do everything is, but yeah. Oh yeah, you, onion rings. Fried are... food doesn't travel well. No, especially fries. Yeah, like you could do takeout for wings and just reheat them in the oven. Yeah, you want you know something that pops that you're frying. Mm. You got to make it at home. Okay, well uh, you haven't convinced me yet, Chuck. There's nothing worse than take out french fries that just gets super soggy in the in the clamshell styrofoam box Mm -hmm. like it just results in so much condensation and it it kills the fry it kills my french fry i'll tell you what i feel like since the pandemic a lot of takeout french fries have gotten much better because companies realized that that's how people were you know ordering for those orders increased and i don't know I've heard anecdotally. Oh, they're adding something. I remember that we there's covered some this kind in of like twenty twenty. Additive that yeah. gets added so that they stay crispier while in there. And pro- I remember covering that. And just probably it kills me yeah. along with it, but that's fine because they're crispy. I'm at eating least. French fries. I, like it's going to kill me at some stage. Just put I've them accepted a- that. Make them crispy. Right. If it, if it crisps up my intestines the same way it crisps up the fry, that's the cost of doing that's business. That's on me, not you. Yeah. Just put them in a paper bag. It, it's as simple as that. It, it, no need to stuff it in the clamshell styrofoam. Yeah, the styrofoam is what does it, isn't it? Nope. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Paul LaMonica from CNN Business. We're talking artificial intelligence with Paul. The latest news on inflation and how the markets are reacting every morning, right here on the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Life estates are not simple documents, and while they can be beneficial in some cases, you should be aware of the many pitfalls in using them. There's the potential for you to lose control of your estate, a higher risk of income tax consequences, and hidden gift issues that can arise as well. If you haven't done your planning yet, now's the time to learn about the effects that life estates can have when it comes to protecting your assets. Call Cushing and Dolan today at 866-848-5699 and request their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Don't leave your assets to chance. Call 866-848-5699 and get your free guide today. 
Cushing and Dolan have been helping New England families for more than 30 years. Let them help you, too. Call 866-848-5699 or request the guide online at LegalExchangeShow.com. That's LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. The SECURE Act became law in 2019, but a new bill has updated some key areas. As of January 1st of this year, it's time to take another look at how these changes may affect your financial situation. Hi, this is Chuck Zada from the Armstrong Advisory Group. And whether it's the new age for required minimum distributions, how RMDs are affected if you have a Roth 401k account, or changes to catch-up contributions to any employer-sponsored retirement plan, we have a brand new guide called Understanding the SECURE Act 2.0. This guide provides important information as to how any or all of these issues may affect your personal financial strategy. Call us right now at 800-393-4001 and request your free guide today, or you can request it at armstrongadvisory.com. The proceeding was paid for by Armstrong Advisory Group, a registered investment advisor. Nothing in the ad or in any Armstrong guide is specific financial, legal, or tax advice. Consult your own financial, tax, and estate planning advisors before making any investment decisions. Armstrong may contact you to offer investment advisory services. The United States Virgin Islands and Sports Illustrated Swimsuit have partnered for the second year in a row to give away a luxury trip for two to America's Caribbean paradise. The winner can choose either St. Croix, St. Thomas, or St. John. And the trip includes airfare from the continental U.S., four nights hotel accommodations, ground transportation, and a private photography session. The contest runs through February 13th, with the winner being announced on February 20th. Each island offers incredible experiences, from world-renowned scuba diving on St. Croix to the most pristine beaches in the Caribbean on St. Thomas to picturesque harbors and beautiful snorkeling on St. John. From the moment you arrive, you'll find yourself falling naturally in rhythm with the heartbeat of the islands because the weather is perfect all year round. There's no money to exchange and no passport required. Go to visitusvi.com for more information and to enter the contest. That's visitusvi.com. My name is Dottie. This is my VA story. My father served in World War II. He was my hero. As he got older, he needed more help. VA New England Healthcare was there for him and our family every step of the way. VA New England Healthcare offers unlimited healthcare options. The best part? It never cost our family a single penny. As a veteran, my father deserved the best, and so does a veteran in your life. My name is Dottie, and I choose VA. For more information, call 1-844-VA-CARES or visit vacares.us. Life estates are not simple documents and can carry risk including the potential for you to lose control of your estate. If you haven't done your planning yet, call Cushing and Dolan at 866-848-5699 and get your free copy of their new guide called Calculating the Consequences of Life Estates. Call 866-848-5699 or request it online at LegalExchangeShow.com. The proceeding was paid for and the views expressed are solely those of Cushing and Dolan. Cushing and Dolan and or Armstrong Advisory may contact you offering legal or investment services. Cushing and Dolan and Armstrong Advisory do not endorse each other and are not affiliated. Text us, 617-362-1385, with your comments and questions about today's show. This is the Financial Exchange Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, the weekend. The Financial Exchange is proudly partnered with VA New England. If you or a loved one serve this country, get the health benefits you earned and deserve. Call 844-VA-CARES. That's 844-VA-CARES. As promised, we're now joined by Paul LaMonica from CNN Business talking a little artificial intelligence with us. Paul, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. And this is actually me, not not a bot. Is there any truth to the rumor that you are going to be rolling out your LaMonica bot anytime soon? Oh, my. The LaMonica bot would be uh, a heavy lift, although actually probably it wouldn't. It would just be you know cheesy sports and 70s and 80s music references. So... Uh, how hard could that be? It's all good for us. That works for us. There you go. So AI has been really kind of over the last two months kind of building to a crescendo seemingly this week in terms of the conversation. And I mentioned on, I think it was our Wednesday show, it, it's starting to get that vibe of crypto where it just everyone's like putting AI in their name and this and that. Are, are we starting to see the hype outpace reality now? I think we are. There is uh, you know, a little bit of a concern that some of the smaller 
pure play AI companies have run up too far, too fast. Uh, you know, because you know clearly there's a lot of hype because of Microsoft and uh, you know negative hype because of Alphabet and their uh, demo flop with Bard. But you know Baidu and uh, big Chinese tech uh, search engine company also uh, doing a lot to boost AI. But you, as you point out, there are companies C3 dot AI, for example. Its ticker symbol is AI. Now they didn't just change it to that this year in order to latch onto a trend. And this mm. is a, a company that's run by Tom Siebel of Siebel Systems. He sold his software firm to Oracle uh, you know, many years ago. So there are legitimate business people in the world of AI that are doing interesting things. But again, to your point, I think it is like crypto. It's like the dot-com boom of the late 90s, early 2000s, that investors may be getting a little overboard because they see AI in a name. And, you know, these companies, the smaller ones at least, they're not profitable yet. You know, a company like C3, uh, SoundHound AI, which I mentioned, a speech and audio recognition software firm, not yet profitable, Big Bear, Dot AI. Uh, you know, they work with a, a lot of uh, artificial intelligence for government agencies. These are legitimate businesses, but they're startups that are growing rapidly on the revenue side, but not yet profitable. Paul, we've been hearing about artificial intelligence for a while now. Why is this set of technology at this time capturing you know, the public's imagination in a way that things over the last three to five years did not? Yeah, I think that chat GPT is something that really surprised people by how relatively good it is that the software turns out things that are more natural sounding than some of these bot driven. I mean, I know not to denigrate some of my competitors, but there are some news outlets that have been using artificial intelligence and you read these stories and you wonder, you know, where was the artificial editor to try and inject some life into this really boring, bland prose that the bot churned out. But it's getting better and ChatGBT is a perfect example of that. So I think people realize that like any technology, there are going to be missteps. Look at what happened to alphabet this week the stock's gotten crushed because they had a mistake in one of their demos where the ai tool said something that wasn't true these are still the early stages these these uh, technologies are going to be far from perfect anytime soon but people understand that there's a lot of promise with it being the early stages the other thing that i come back to is that for most people we don't have the technological know-how to understand which one of these is inherently better than the other and which ones may end up you know fading out so it's challenging as an investor to look at them and say yes this is the one that i'm going to bet on because we don't really know is that fair to say yeah i think that is fair to say i mean the the companies are all that are in the ai the smaller ai focused companies are all in different parts of the business they could all continue to uh, you know, uh, add a, a revenue at a decent clip, but will they ever become profitable? Will they ultimately get big-footed, if you will, by a larger tech firm? I think that's one thing that people are forgetting, that when a business is in its infant stages, it eventually will become legitimate, but that means that it will attract competition from larger legacy players. So Amazon in, in e-commerce, perfect example of how it survived and thrived but there are so many other dot-coms retailers from the late 90s boom that went bust, not just because of Amazon, but because Walmart and Target and other physical retailers woke up and realized, oh, yeah, maybe we should sell things online, right. too. Paul, we appreciate you joining us today. Have a uh, fantastic weekend. I'm guessing that you're not pulling for the Eagles? You are correct. The only time this Giants fan... Rooted for the Eagles was the, the Philly special Super Bowl because of Ugh. your team being uh, kind of the evil empire. But I like the Chiefs. I like Mahomes. I like Reed. So, sorry. Going to be going for the Chiefs. I'm actually on Team Eagles for this one, I got to say. I, uh, I, I just I, – I don't know why, but uh, 
We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll get to chat about it take, next week, Paul. Take to this take this to the bank. A Kelsey brother is going to end Sunday night with two rings. Um, again, I know a lot has been written about this, but imagine being their mom and having to yeah. watch that. Like, ugh, just absolutely brutal. Paul, thanks again yeah, for joining they, us. They both won one, so I, you can't like say, oh, well, I'm rooting for the other one because he hasn't won. You know? Yeah, 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 that's true. Just whoever you love most. Yeah. <laughs> Paul, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy the weekend. That is Paul Monica from CNN Business. Mike, what do you got for me? Uh... CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, pulling a 180 on Hulu, uh, at least compared to where Chapek was just a few months ago. Um, we talked about ESPN yesterday, and I am I'm much more surprised by this than I would be about ESPN being spun off. The idea with Hulu was, hey, we're going to bundle this together with Disney+. Plus. We've got content for adults. We've got content for kids, for family-friendly. We've got National Geographic. We've got ESPN. Um very different model for Disney right now than what they were relying on before. And I think it actually plays to other commentaries we've seen from Bob Iger after the earnings call, which was we have profitable pre-established brands that we want to further expand into. We're making Frozen 3, Toy Story 5, every Star Wars scenario you can possibly imagine. That's not Hulu's bread and butter. Hulu's bread and butter is coming up with things like Stranger Things and newer content and huh? uh, push. Is Who? Stranger Things not Hulu? No, no. that's, that's uh, Netflix. Netflix. Okay, what's big on Hulu? There's something original there. Uh, nothing really. I don't think there's anything amazing. huge. That, like, there's some stuff that's that's fine that I've watched there. I watched. Uh, what was it? Uh, the Dropout, the Elizabeth Holmes uh, miniseries. Dope Sick was really good with uh, it was, Michael it was Keaton. Good. You know, so like there's there's some stuff there. But here's what I do find interesting. It was back in 2019. Oh, The Handmaid's Tale. That's probably the most popular yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. It was back in 2019 that Disney struck a deal with Comcast to buy out a, a chunk of Hulu right. at the time, and then Comcast still owns the rest, and Com- Disney can force Comcast to sell it to them. Who was CEO of Disney in 2019? Iger. So just four years ago, he was like, hey, I want the option to buy Hulu in the future. And now it's, well, I might be getting rid of the whole thing. Yeah a quick pivot quick pivot only murders in the building too on hulu that's a pretty big one steve martin martin short yeah yep we're done for the day done for the week markets remain mixed with the nasdaq down one percent dow is up a quarter percent we'll see you back here on monday enjoy the super bowl